one. Well, I hope everyone's doing well today. I know we haven't been able to have class here for several days and it looks like we might be out for a while. But I think in the time that we're out, I'm gonna to try to make some videos of some of the activities, the labs, the demonstrations that we would normally do in class. And we'll add those to the YouTube channel for you to at least, even though we don't get to do them with you in class, at least you will be able to see the demonstrations and see the concepts actually playing out in real life. What we're gonna look at today, we've been talking a little bit about physical and chemical properties. And over the next week or so, we're gonna be looking at examples of physical and chemical properties. And we're gonna start out with the physical property of solubility. This is one that when we talked about it, several of you weren't really sure what it was. So we're gonna look at an example of it and we're gonna see why it's a physical property and not a chemical property. In order to demonstrate this property of solubility, we're gonna use two very common substances. The first is just water and the second is salt. And when we talk about solubility, we're basically talking about how a substance dissolves in another substance or breaks apart into smaller pieces. So all I'm gonna do is just add some salt to my beaker of water here. And you can see when we put it in at first, it just kind of falls to the bottom and we've still got salt on the bottom, we've got water above it. But we're gonna put it on the stir plate here and we're gonna allow this to mix up really good. All right, so it looks like our salt has dissolved here. And again, when we talk about solubility, this idea of something dissolving, it's just not going away. It's not chemically changing. It's not making a new substance. It's just breaking down into smaller pieces. So there's still salt in the water. It's just in such small particles. And now it's in what we call a solution. It's mixed in with this water. So we don't see the salt anymore. We just see a clear liquid, right? That's salt water. But we're gonna show you why this is a physical property and not a chemical property. And in order to do that, we're gonna take our salt back out of the water through another physical change, a change in state. So the goal of this solubility demonstration, of course, is to get the salt back out of the water without having to have chemical reaction. And to do that, we're gonna pour some of this salt water into our test tube here. And all we've gotta do is heat this enough that we can boil the water out, leaving the salt behind, and that'll show you that the salt was in there all along and that there was not a chemical change that took place. So we have our test tube here in a clamp and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my torch to heat the bottom of this and boil the water. And you'll see because it's a small amount of water, it's gonna start boiling fairly quickly, but we should, if this works, be able to get our salt out of here. And you can already see bubbles starting to form in the water here. And that's because, of course, the water is getting warm enough. It's getting above 100 degrees Celsius, which is causing the water to boil off. And we know that when we boil water, it turns into steam, which, again, is not a new substance. That's just the gaseous form of water. But as that gas escapes out, it's going to leave the salt behind because, of course, the salt has a much, much higher melting or boiling point than the water does. We're just going to allow this to go for a couple minutes, and then we'll look and see what's left behind. Well, it looks like our water has gone out of the tube and now you don't see the clear liquid anymore, but now you see white powder in the bottom, which is the salt that we'd added to the water, dissolved in the water earlier. And basically what's happened, it's left behind in the tube because again, the water had such a lower boiling point, we were able to separate the two, not by a chemical reaction, but simply by boiling the water, changing its state from a liquid to a gas and getting it out of the tube and leaving the solid salt behind. Now, the other thing that you'll notice, we'll pull it out and actually look at it here in a minute once it cools off, but you'll notice that the particles of salt are much smaller than they were before because, again, that process of dissolving with a soluble material, it's breaking down into smaller pieces. So the, what's left behind, it's still salt. It's just smaller pieces of salt than we put in before. All right, well, our test tube's cooled off here, so we're gonna go ahead and take it off of our ring stand. 
And let's just take a look and see what's left inside here. Now, when you look at this, you can see the, the white powder inside here, right? That's our salt. And you can see that the water has evaporated out. And right now, the salt's sort of crystallized and stuck on the side of the tube. So we're going to just kind of loosen that up. And then I'll, I'll pour it out and show you the difference between the salt that went into the water and the salt that came out of the water. So what you see here, you see the salt, and now it looks more finer, it looks more powdery than it did when it went in. Because again, those crystals that I put in, the table salt dissolved, they broke down into smaller pieces. But we can see this is still salt. If we taste it, still tastes salty, just like it would if we'd eat it before. The only difference now, because of its solubility, it's been broken down into these smaller pieces because it was mixed in with the water. I know this was a pretty simple demonstration today, but hopefully this has helped with your understanding of the physical property of solubility. Like I mentioned earlier, over the next few days, over the next week or so, we'll be looking at more of these examples of the different physical and chemical properties that we had a chance to talk about in class, and we'll give you a chance to actually see examples of how these properties work in the real world.